So, all of you know her, obviously. <laughs> Not that many of you probably know me. Um, I'm J.A. Michaeline. I'm a writer and an editor and a critic of comics. Um, and I'm Kitchen and Chocolate and my So, why don't you have to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Allie. <laughs> uh, I, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, just for introduction, obviously. Make comics. I've made comics since around 2010. Uh, my last book is when I read *The Castle* for Tony Allen Press. And uh, I don't have a table here this year, but I have um, a signing time with Tony Allen uh, from three to four, uh, both probably uh, uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, so that's where you can uh, catch me. Um, I'm from Stratford, Ontario, small town in Canada. I'm Canadian. Oh, my. Brace yourself. <laughs> uh, and my pronouns are she and her. Uh, mine are she and her as well. And just some housekeeping things. We'll have about 10 minutes at the end of the talk for questions. Please make sure to go to either end of these kind of aisles that you guys are sitting in. The microphone stations on both sides. If you want questions to go through the microphone, consideration for the bill of five again, or otherwise, you can So just make sure you ask those questions for that. Um, if you don't remember to repeat your question, I will make sure to repeat your question for you so that everybody can hear All right, let's get started. So, the first thing I want to ask you about, um, I feel like a lot of your comments have dreams in them. So many. Um, you actually kept a dream journal a little bit ago, and then you yeah. But yeah, um, so you kept some dream comments. Um, that you drew, and I think there are like five or six of them. So I was wondering, what have you been dreaming of? <laughs> that was it, it was just fine. Uh, no, uh, I've, I do keep dream journals, I've kept them since I was a kid. Um, those I did, these comics, which are on my website, uh, I did, um, because I was having a rash of bad dreams, and this was a way to sort of excise the bad feelings. Um, and it, it did help. Um, but I do keep a dream journal, a lot of my comics, uh, start as dreams, and then I work them so they actually make sense. People aren't bored <laughs> listening to them. Um, but actually recently, my dad gave me this file folder of, uh, you know, all these old drawings I've done as a child. And, uh, <laughs> that's a question. Uh, and, um, <laughs> and, um, and, um, and he had, he had um, interviewed me from the ages of like two to, however old, he would write down dreams I told him. So I've always transcribed dreams that me as a two and three year old told my dad. And it's really weird. <laughs> and, um, Wait, now I said my dad can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you'd be like, and it's all like on dot matrix, like, you know. <laughs> um, and um, so yeah, so I think because he sort of started that with me, I'm always like, and I kept like um, normal waking hour journals too. Mm -hmm. but, um, Dream journals, like, um, for me, are most helpful when I have to, like, kind of create the just getting them out of my head. Because I do have very vivid um, dreams, and I have a lot of dreams at night. So, um, it's a lot. Like, I remember telling a friend once, like, I guess I'm going to sleep and, like, just rest. Just like, I have to do the cold adventure. Like, what's going to happen? Um, so, yeah, this is sort of my way. And the three-year-old dreams are like, you know, not very clear because I'm a three. But um, one thing I did note is that I would talk about like, oh, I saw a spider in my dream was on the desk. And then my dad was like, oh, this is like uh, an episode of uh, the Twilight Zone we were watching last night. And it's like, what? We're like, oh, this is clearly because we watched like this werewolf movie last night. Okay, so I was watching more movies <laughs> with my dad and my when I was like three. Um, so maybe that's where it started. Can you tell us about dreams you had recently? Oh god. And now I said that I remember all my dreams and maybe I have one. Um like the pretty banal these days. Um I had a dream here's a, a, a dream story. I had a dream um right before waking about a week ago that um my dog I have a ch I've got two dogs but my dog <laughs> is a chihuahua and I had a dream that um I had entered an Italian restaurant and he was 
uh, on the, because I had also been dreaming of the Sopranos earlier, and uh, he was on the floor, and he, was, he had eaten something, and he, and he was poisoned and dying, and I was picking him up and carrying him around his like, lived body. And then I woke up and I asked if the wow was working. <laughs> but then later that day, he did get uh, deathly ill. And so by that, by, the, by that evening, I was like literally picking up his own body, taking to the emergency bed and all that stuff. So that was a weird dream occurrence. Um, but most of the time, You said most of your dreams are now, but sometimes you work through like your bad dreams with comics. Yeah, yes. Uh, this, like this, what this is from, is from an extremely um, banal dream where I was just in a bookstore and like someone was like telling me what the book was about. What I didn't include, <laughs> and I feel a bit dishonest in my dream comics because you don't include every single detail because it's too complicated. Mm -hmm. But at a comics festival, many people would hear. <laughs> um, uh, the person who was, I was at this bookstore in my dream, and the person who was telling me, you got to pick up this book, is just a natural boy. <laughs> So uh, I let that out of the, I felt that would distract <laughs> from that. Um, I don't know, could have made it richer. Yeah, that's true. It's, you know, a few years earlier. Um, but yeah, normally it's just like really long, complicated. They're just like detailed, but not necessarily interesting yeah. dreams. But um, yeah, the, the dream comics, those are bad dreams. The, the, the graphic novel I'm working on now uh, was inspired by a dream. I often have dreams that I, I Finished the book. Mm -hmm. I've been reading through it. I'm like, oh, this looks like pretty good. And then I will be like, oh, I'll make that into something like that. So a few of my comics are hard to pull them out, but they started off as like, kind of like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not just like dream journals. I think writing stuff that you can have to talk about dreams. Dreams just kind of so much within like the characters that are in like your comics, like the book. There's one. There's another one. Like partially in a dream, partially <laughs> yeah. not. Um, when the darkness presses, has yeah. all dreams of dreams in reality. Exactly. Um, and, and I think that's also because in at a certain point when I was making comics, and at certain points in my life, I've confused, especially as a kid, confused dreams with memories. Mm -hmm. And um, at certain points in my life, probably in the past few years or something, I did. Um, it was hard to distinguish the people in the dream. Um, so, uh, and it's also just like you can draw a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> when you're reading yeah. dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think one of the things I remember actually distinctly about um, the boxing, mm -hmm. the boxing side, was I was really impressed by your ability to communicate dream logic in the way that, like, things don't make practical and the uh, thank you. That's great to hear that was accomplished. Um, because one uh, during one period where I was speaking dream journals, I would just uh, do that like uh, three them in the morning mm -hmm. to get them all out. Yeah. And one of the rules for that was that I couldn't like explain. I didn't want to fall into the trap of you're talking your dream. It's like, oh, you were there, but like, well, weren't you? But, like, mm -hmm. I have, and I have, have, or whatever. So you don't need to have all these caveats. So right. I just wanted to like write it down. It's, like, Kind of ideas because it's something that's great. Have you ever thought about taking on dreams? Because it always kind of makes me think about it. No, I, I just I use it for a little bit. I'm going to take a journal now. Um, I mean, I haven't done it for a while. Sometimes I'll just like jot down notes because mm -hmm. I can get my ideas. So I'm going to just go through the dream journal and mm -hmm. pick things up. Oh, one thing I started doing the past couple of years is I started drawing like floor plans and maps of mm -hmm. so, my dream locations. Mm -hmm. So that I can draw the floor plan and like, like point out like, oh, this is where this happened in the dream, or this is the path this character took, or like, uh, just because I, I sort of got really hung up on the dream environment. Yeah, so. I'm actually going to sit in the gym a little. Just all the grounds of this. Yeah. So um, this is from uh, when I arrived at the castle. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're saying here is actually partially connected in my mind to like, the dream magic stuff, and also the architecture of the space. Sure. One thing that I find disorienting, but also completely orienting when you're in a dream, is everything makes perfect sense when you're in a dream. Sure. For the most part, I don't know if it makes sense. Um, but to me, it always makes perfect sense. You're like, yes, 
of course I'm going with Ronald McDonald to the opera. Yeah. But like, you know, we still have to go do this other thing afterwards. So like, Ronald, yeah. you gotta know, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, put the, put yeah. the shoes on. Um, yeah. 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 But like, things are so straightforward. But then when I think about how to, never mind explain them to someone else, but to explain them to myself, even in space, I find it totally bad. Oh, really? And so when I was, because well, you just, you move from, you step into a locker, and end up in the hallway. I'm sure that's normal. And like looking at this image, um, one of the things overall I just think is extremely masculine about your work. Um, they do use like ladies, but I think that's people just want to do And they do a little much. I don't think they're doing too much here. Um, <laughs> but layouts. Um, I think you layout things that's like very interesting, and especially in, in this same way, because it does have that human feel. It does kind of have that sure all of these things do connect and somehow they arrived on the straight path you know, over to the side and now down to the front towards towards like, the viewer and then into the camera. It's a good mm -hmm. And all of those shapes are I think mostly counter to like, the standard use the eye to lead you down the page in this overall general diagonal direction and do that two times and make sure that the eye sometimes moves from that Z up here so right. you can do it again. And I think I, was, I guess what I want to ask you is some combination between dream logic and layout and architecture. Um, for this image, mean, this is not super indicative of my dreams or how my dreams usually mm -hmm. work. My, uh, like when I dream of places, they're usually pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's weird things within them. Mm -hmm. like, this is our apartment, and this is a giant room with like, the stone bed. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, um, for this, and just in layout in general, um, and which sort of dovetails into making comments, all that, that stuff about like leading the eye with mm -hmm. um, When I went to school, I was very intimidated by that. I went to school for animation, um, like thought like kind of animation. It was the last year of that program. <laughs> um, and uh, they were really big on that, on my composition, and lead the eye here, and put like a chain in the foreground of your dungeon layout and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, to control where the viewer goes. And um, I usually, and I got really cut off in, I, it didn't, I couldn't look at it logically. Mm -hmm. um, so with my work now, I do it, um, and I'm not a good student. Um, but uh, this is all kind of more intuitive. Like, it's, it's sort of what's fun for me to draw. Um, so like I really <laughs> like drawing Baroque picture frames. <laughs> um, it's just like really pleasant. Uh, and like kind of like meditative for me to draw, and the same with the um, kind of like damask uh, flower pattern. Like, um, I, I, I really use that a lot of the time, and it's totally just because I find it pleasant to draw. Mm -hmm. um, but with this, it was I wanted a two-page spread to show them moving to a different location, but I also right. didn't want to draw in perspective. <laughs> and I like didn't want to draw architecture because with this comic especially, that might make it a real place yeah. and it's not really a real place. Um, so I was pretty just kind of like put some weirdness in um, without having to worry about things making sense. But I guess to me that that is the architecture of it. Yeah, I guess this so. shape indicates that this is not a real place, but mm -hmm. it also suggests that it could be we're just not seeing anything. That's also part of the horror, right? Yeah. That like there's all of these weird paths that you don't know where the rest of this like Yeah, I wanted it to be like uh, road goes or where like to convey that you would not be able to get back to mm -hmm. the body. Totally. <laughs> right. And um, then like the window is hanging off of like the path that they're walking. And yeah. I also just noticed is that blood rain outside? Yeah, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> Seems fine. Um, but yeah, I I I I just really think there's a lot of I think it was every day of um, his freshman college um, and the philosophy class because I think it's just kind of like philosophy class. Um, and I got to see them in this and I go to the class because I was saying that in my dream, I was looking at a triangle and I had the other side and she was like, what do you think? And I'm like, but I did in the dream. <laughs> so it's like stuff like that that I think, you know, stretching or expanding or not to a part of your role set the image either structurally in this way or overall the way that your characters kind of look at things, requiring them to conform to the rules. But 
one thing I can think about with um, I'm touching this a little bit, but sorry, I'm just being a little bit weird. Um, I think readers and careers alike have kind of discussed the participatory pressure for when it comes to comics. Like when you go to see a horror movie, that's like your decision to go see a horror movie, and like you kind of sit down, and there it is, it's all happening for me. Um, but like with a comic, um, you have to you have to move the story along at your pace for the most part. So you have to decide whether or not you, you're going to flip the game, whether you're not you are going to open the door. So suddenly you are now part of the horror that you're creating for yourself. And I think control kind of ends up being one of these unspoken or probably spoken by several film critics before me, but unspoken to me in my mind as as a um, <laughs> uh, unspoken thing about whether horror can exist without a sense of control. Um, so you're saying that like that like the control of horror and comic versus Actually, overall, like I think control is needed in horror because control part of, by the author or by the readers. Either way, like I think control, either the protagonist is seeking a sense of control, okay. or the reader is can try to control what the pace, or the, or the author is also trying to control what you, the creator, mm -hmm. controlling where the eye is going, all those sure. things. So like all of this is kind of different seedings of control and it's taking control and that feeling of like, oh, I don't have control of this fire score, regardless of what's actually on the page or on the screen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, the, for, for me, when it, I do think about that in terms of mm -hmm. playing a comic scene, because there's only so much control you can have. Right. Because, uh, as much like a movie, if you're in a movie theater watching a movie and something happens, you can't, I mean, you could at home, but in a theater, you can't go home and see what's happening. With a comic, you can just be like, eh, look yeah. back. I'm running into that problem now, actually, with the, a book of mine where I kind of want to do something in the future, I show a character, but I know the reader could just look back and see them before, or like check the reference on it to like mm -hmm. see if somebody's like lying or not. <laughs> it's so easy to go back. Um, so I, I'm kind of, I'm keeping that in mind as I lay out the comic. Um, and, and pacing, I do think, into our, it's obviously super important. That's usually one of the biggest edits that happens to my work, um, even once I finish the book. But it happened with this too. Once it was going to become a thing that people actually read, I went back and I put in pages to change the pacing of it. So it didn't mm -hmm. And also, you know, then you, so I could control the, you know, just, just as much as I lay out a page or do the writing, I lay out the, what's going to be on the left of my page, so that the page turns are all controlled by me. Because I do have a limited amount of power mm -hmm. um, in terms of that. I can't, everyone's always like, oh, you can't do that upstairs and down. Uh, it's like, well, you're not true. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, so like, my life varies, but um, I can at least control it in the future. Or like in the web comics, I can control where you're clicking next. Or um, there was one comic that I saw you had there, uh, Marco's Ring, where you can click on the objects in the room to um, pick like where the, the story of the comic is reached. Um, and that was, um, Sort of because I wanted uh, to put not ownership or response, but you are complicit in, <laughs> I guess, yeah. the reading of the story. Like, once you actually have to click or choose things. I, I play a lot of video games too, so this is probably going to be in mind. You know, a video game can have like a not great story, but because you're controlling it and because you're like in it, it has more impact on you yeah. than a book might. Um, well, obviously, but like a book with a similar story. Um, and it's and it's that uh, it's that to me of the, of the person it only shows to right. to click this thing. Um, <laughs> no, exactly. Like um, I mean, yeah. I was I was also going to ask you about choice because I think those are slightly different things mm -hmm. than control. Like separate from you know your control of the speed or whatever else. Like ultimately, you also become the center as mm -hmm. part of these comments, and Margot Lutheran actually is the one that, that made me feel most participatory in this. Like, um, the idea of like, an ergotic text, like the text that like, makes you do work in order to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I remember reading in a different group that you did, that you actually were initially just going to use this the way it was, but then you started putting the column up. Yes. People kind of had the idea yeah. of what order 
to read it, there's like a poem yeah. that references like the doll, God, blood, flowers. Yeah, because I first put up just this image. Well, first I wanted to put up, I was really experimenting with reading stories out of order mm -hmm. and how that would impact how you can certain parts of the story. Uh, and originally I just put up this image and I said, I'm going to comic out. Now, you have to click on the thing to yeah. read the comics. But I just put up this one image and everyone's like, Great comment, but like, where's the <laughs> where's the story and the words? I'm like, oh, you have to like click. So people weren't really getting it. So I then, um, yeah, it was released over four or five weeks, and uh, there's a poem at the top, and I would add a line of the poem that sort of describes the story. Uh, but we would also have like, I think they call it in all caps or something. Yeah, like with bold flowers. Yeah, <laughs> mirror. <Yeah. laughs> um, but at the end, up now, and so the, and then those things would become quick. Right. Now you can just go on and you can click on them in any order. Um, at the same time, can you go? <laughs> no, no. This is a, this is your question. Yeah. So like, once the poem is there, can you? I mean, you can. You can do whatever you want, yeah. but I feel like then I know what you want to be in the true. order that it's read, yeah. and then also their number. So, yeah. so yeah. I feel like you get to as many as like, oh, well, it's at the beginning. So oh, yeah. let me see what Emily wanted me to read it, <laughs> not read it that way. Um, and so there's numbers and that's that. that is so true. Yeah, I mean, but I think it's still possible that there's there's still that quiet author hand that's there telling you this is the way that I want to read it. But that's not what I want. Like it, mm -hmm. at the same the same year, I also found a comic which is I think there were like hundred comics. Mm -hmm. um, it was for TCAP in 2000. Sorry, mm -hmm. it was for TCAP in 2011. Um, and so it's the same year I made this. And it was my first mini comic, and what it was was actually eight mini comics <laughs> um, that were all quarter page size, and they were all stuffed into an envelope. And what they were, they were single panel stories. One comic was a key that told you all these numbers of a family um, and showed that they're portraits. And then every other, all the other books were uh, stamped with the name of the family member, <laughs> and they showed uh, it, it was like it was called that night in June. And the key books that there's no fire outside of the And uh, every every booklet would tell you the story from the perspective of that family. Right. And um, it was stuffed into an envelope, and every single one was out of the book, like they were all in different order. Mm -hmm. Because that one was like specifically meant to not um, be read in any, any specific order. I wanted to see how people's loyalties would change with certain characters mm -hmm. like, if they read this guy's story before. First story or what first story after, and also all the panels that conform to the same season. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of where I was at with that. But it's <laughs> so I haven't really gone back. I think if I went back and kind of did something like that again, um, I would do maybe sort of more of a family -like, um, thing. Um, but I, I do really like the idea. And then for that one too, that was also inspired by like um, role playing games, or like especially the end of role playing games. Where like you know you have people who role play like you know Marvel or something or like Harry Potter and they're like my characters Iron Man I only argue Iron Man or something and and I like that like uh, that reader ownership over a character mm -hmm. or a fictional character so I kind of want to replicate that by making those people like oh, I like this guy I trust this guy over like her story or I trust her over mm -hmm. um, so but then this came up the, later in the year and I realized that couldn't quite do it. <laughs> what do you think would have happened if you just left all the game? I'd probably just get a lot of tweets being like, ah, how? How does it work? And, uh, you know, I probably didn't, at this point, I wouldn't really mind that this much, mm -hmm. but I think at, at that point, I just want people to read the comments. Yeah. So that's why I had to kind of like spell it out. And yeah. All that kind of stuff. I'm happy to have one of the um, tweets of tweets. Yes. Um, which I don't think I have any just one of the things I would like to show you guys is not in the middle, oh, um, sure. but, um, but there are a couple points in recent weeks where if you just have a little bit of the same, it's like it's kind of Yeah, it's like a mouse over change, it's like a thing change. And then one of them, the, the snake changes in the same hand. Yeah. And I was thinking a couple of things, which is first of all, if my mouse did not happen to be in the middle of the story, yeah. I would not be my mouse. Like if I just went scrolling up to the side to not, mm -hmm. um, not like lock it into what I'm reading, it'd be gone. So for you, I think that at least was a risk that you took. 
to some capacity. It's just like, I also had people with that game and they're like, oh, you should like run this term so that it changes when you do this because all doesn't work on your phone and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm moving on to the next thing. <laughs> That comic also had, um, depending on which I, uh, which exit link yes. you took at the bottom, yes. it had like, a slightly different story on the yeah. other side. That was more sympathetic to either of the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, usually when I do stuff like this, or like through Snake Leaves, I do get people saying, like, oh, you should make it more clear, because we're missing out on all this stuff. But that is true. Um, but, we care about it anyways. <laughs> but uh, there's also like a sense of like, you know, talking to the leader of your agency, it's like fine when you find something that's not yeah. that nobody told you about, or like yeah. that you found accidentally because you're not happy to be in the right place. Yeah. Um, and then I like scroll back, so I was like, I miss my yeah. snakes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like these things are almost like, especially the web comics, they're all just like little experiments like, for, for fun for me, like mm -hmm. um, storytelling experiments. If they're not, like, I think there's one that's in French, but otherwise, I don't know. Uh, no, uh, his face all right. Oh, uh, his face all right in the anthology. I had to put that yeah. one in there. <laughs> <laughs> My publisher told me to. Yeah, that's the only one that's yeah. I think they're like that. The rest are all just like, like, they're basically what they are are things I do to decompress like, what I'm just, I want to do with my own thing as opposed to like, what I'm going to do. Right. And you've talked about before in your recent things about the adaptation process of. His face all red. Um, he's some great thing on the cash, like, on the And before, like, I saw my ultimate question at the end of that is how do you feel about that experience? And would you rather someone read, even though it's oh. not like you were satisfied with the adaptation that you made and with the, with the anthology? Yeah. Which one is a true child? Which, oh, the webcomic, by far. Oh, the other one under the bus immediately. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I think it works okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think of all of them, it works okay. Because that comic, when it came out, I had all these people, I, I like, just took a break from the internet because it was like so many people were like paying attention to me. It's haunting. I think I blocked Reddit for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, I'm so yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but with that comic, what I wanted to do initially was just have it be one endless scroll. Mm -hmm. And that was just because, like, I didn't, like, why break it up? It's just on a website. Yeah. Um, and then that would look, take a little time to load. So I was like, oh, well, I'll put a few page breaks in yeah. there. And, uh, but that was, like, very, very functional. Again, too good type of choice. It mm -hmm. wasn't like me, like, playing with the campus, like, in all these sorts of ways. I mean, that's what I was doing, but I was yeah. not doing it. Um, so that's the same thing. But like, yeah, that's true. And result was the same. Mm -hmm. um, so for the the, o the only good, not something only good thing, but the positive change in the print version is that I re-lettered all of it and I changed it grammatical error. Mm -hmm. um, which certain people have pointed out to me in the web comment. And I was going to change, I got a very polite email from this young woman who was like, oh, this is a But like, uh, you know, which is kind of clear and whatever, and I was like, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll do, like, it's changed already in the print version, but yeah, I'll just, I just change it in the web version. And then, like, not long after that, I got some asshole, <laughs> some dude who's, like, a famous poet or whatever, he's a, like, he emailed me, like, the jerkiest email about, like, uh, your grammar's wrong, I don't know this guy. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I'm never changing it. <laughs> And also in the uh, in the print version, it is the lettering is much better. I have much better handle on my lettering, um, and that's correct. So that's the positive. But otherwise, it translated pretty well to the print. The only issue was there's one um, slow descent into a pit, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that works very well on the scroll and on the page. I do a page turn for it, yeah. which is not ideal. You said that your you had a Lettering. Well, I, yeah. What makes you think that 
So when I started doing web comics, um, I started lettering them by, I couldn't find like a font or something that looked right. It always just looked like a font over my heart. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, oh, I'll letter it by hand. But my handwriting was like, it just didn't suit it. It was too, I don't know, nice look, like it was too like, cute or something. Mm -hmm. So I, I, did, I did make a concentrated effort to change my handwriting. Uh, and I started, uh, especially my S's, it's a weird markers and S's at the beginning of it, uh, to make my, my writing a bit more like spiddly. And uh, that would unite better with the art I was on. Uh, so, in space already was like one of the first ones that I used that, that type, that style of lettering on. Um, and I think by the time I lettered the print version, I had like under a year and a half or something to turn that So it's just like more. It's nicer. <laughs> it looks nicer to me. Um, it's not as, I think, but it's a lot easier. Did you change the handwriting? Is that the other thing you did? Yes, yeah. Like, it affects like, everything. Yeah. So, so now it's like all spooky all the time. Because since then, it's a still a lot. Yeah, mother. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got more murderous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you wanted to, so you said there are no jump scares in comics. Well, I said, People say that, sorry, I take it back. You would, say, <laughs> you would never say such a thing. Um, but just since we're talking about media differences, you sent me the PDF of when I read the novel. So my mode of reading this comic was um, was reading it as a PDF, the full screen on the computer. Okay. Um, and I presume that when someone reads this, that's probably not going to be the way they're going to read it. Because if you're reading it visually, we're going to be the same so what I got to experience is a full screen of this. Uh, and oh, you know what happens yes. in the screen after that. Yes. You got your face all in it. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is nice. And then suddenly yeah. things happen in the things after this. I'm not going to for all of you. But it's just it was something I was thinking about because you, know, you were sending me a method in which it's not actually being published. And so that's the way that I experienced it. And so that meant that my experience as a whole was different from yeah, like how those two yeah. in the book are like next to each other. And then the next so the page turn is two more. Yeah. Okay. And then there's another. Page. Yeah. Okay. One is the same. But then there's in through the woods. There's another one like that too. So yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there was something really satisfying. Not that I, I feel like we were probably way too young. The the path in terms of considering the differences. Sure. But. <laughs> I think there was something so satisfying about that hell image, mm -hmm. just in one space of it. You're, you're advancing it, but it's not going anywhere. It's the other thing. It's that like you are trying to move forward from this people, and your comment is like, nope. <laughs> no, but we're, still, we're still here. We're still doing it, and surprise, this is And like a wife, too, that, like, I, 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 I love doing big, full, one day image mm -hmm. pages, mm -hmm. which is so, this comic, this book especially, is like my most indulgent thing. The Baroque flying frames, <laughs> like all this community and stuff. And then just these. It's not bad news. It's not bad news. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and these, like, yeah, one, one image pages. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. if you had all these people from the same page or even the turn to see the reveal image, it wouldn't quite work as well. It works best mm -hmm. with just. Uh, Required, yeah, yeah, it's required to be there without motion. Because that's where she is, right? Mm -hmm. If you're looking at more than her page, it's not. Yeah. It's not. I want you to be more where she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think about your pain sort a lot, actually. Just because, I mean, compared with like, your comments to what you so much, like the, the element of choice, but even going to back to, sorry, I'm going to go back to, um, so this is from Mother's Room, this is the one when you flip the ball and you get this on. Um, so by the time I think I've gotten around to reading um, in Spaces Over, I don't think Spaces Over. The Spaces is kind of, the, 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 I'll tell you this, <laughs> my secret, even as like, myself, the Mother's Room page just reminded me, uh, I can't take, I have a hard time, I don't even work, taking myself and my work seriously. <laughs> and so like, I have alternate names in my comics that Wait. Tell me all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying this, but 
his, his face all red. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, I call it <laughs> his butt's all wet. <laughs> I'm all glad you're here. <laughs> and I called Margo's room. I called it Cargo's room. <laughs> and um, oh, and there's one that came out uh, a couple years ago called uh, Some Other Animal Skin. It's like mm -hmm. a yeah. hand lotion for the aloe. Yeah, it's yeah. called uh, I call that hand screen. Hand screen. Oh, it's a
I really want to like have those going for a while, have the comic in the center, and then at a certain point change the banner heads. Mm -hmm. And also yeah. having the at the, the top of the screen it says uh, yeah, it updated updates weekly across that it's complete. It was, I mean I uploaded it completely. Right. I've never updated it. I didn't that but I was gonna ask you. Yeah, I kinda like something like that. <laughs> um and uh, yeah, so like banner heads are like like yeah, you said it's like in the frame, there's another web comic. And then there's like one of those ads that's like like a city of like say the kingdom. I don't know what you find my own. <laughs> and she's like, she sells like an orb of magic and goes through face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would you need to? Um, and uh, that alternates between, yeah, so like, I think like another game is like show all yeah. the weapons. Right. Um, yeah, no, and then uh, oh, we'll be working on the game change. Yeah. Like, so, it becomes part of the horror also. Yeah, and then it reappears in a collection that's so sweet dreams also. Yes, yeah, they do. Yes. Yeah. So that banner ads are back in the dream portion. Yes, yeah, so they're changed to the. So, my very last question, mm -hmm. one last general question, um, is so thinking about the outflow being in that banner ad, and then also so the room when the darkness passes. And the yeah. third one are all, I can't remember what the name is, are uh, loosely connect connected. Yes. Right? Yeah. So there's the Dolans who yeah. are in um, One of the Dark Expresses. Mm -hmm. And then that's right up with the room, one of the two girls. It's uh, the yeah, it's the Dolans. And then the girl, Regan from the Creek comic, the yeah. other yeah. day, I forgot. So uh, it's all right. Oh, it's all um, I didn't do it. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I had done like uh, three comics that I think it was like a trilogy mm -hmm. of the His Face All Red, uh, Margo's Room, and the one with the uh, Okay. Uh, they're just like spooky German boys, mm -hmm. little tiny. <laughs> uh, but they're all about the sort of the first. Okay. And then uh, past that, I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. I have a bad habit of like, as soon as people are like, oh, I really and so uh, yeah, so I uh, the next one that I just want to play around in is like I made sort of a small set around Gary Town, which is four stories in the eighties. And originally uh, I was gonna use Regan, I was gonna do stories a series of stories about Regan where she dies in every single Um and she's loosely based on me, so it's fine. She should she shouldn't have played, right? Um and uh, but yeah, so it was kind of fun to just tie in. Yeah, the Dolans, it's their house. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then, like, the main character's house sitting? Or She's house sitting. House sitting slash, like, yeah. they can see and their and kid. And their daughter, daughter. yeah, their yeah. daughters, you can see her name, and the daughter gets referenced in the past, happened at the door. Right. And a couple people think that the other time. Yeah. yeah. But not necessarily. Okay. So, and I think we would love to hear from you. Okay. So, why don't we... Start with you, and then switch you, and then switch you, and hopefully that will be them. I will hopefully try to get to the two of you, but we will make sure that you answer some questions. So, bye. All right. Um, so, pun intended, but what draws you to the horror genre in designing the United States? Um, well, I think it's now it's all before we did a Washington too. <laughs> 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 um, for me, it was just like, uh, I've always really liked horror. Like I grew up with an older brother and dad, and they were like big into horror, and they were like family horror movies and stuff growing up. So it was like, like a big aspect of my childhood. Um, and then once I, I, I got older, you know, I, I always really liked fairy tales, and you know, obviously the the more um, macabre aspects of them. And when I started making comics, I was, in horror comics, and I do read all sorts of horror comics, but I couldn't find ones that like I kind of wanted. So I started making them. <laughs> and like, and again, but it was also like, just it wasn't like I was like planning to become a cartoonist or anything. I just wanted to kind of excise bad vibes <laughs> from my brain. Um, and um, that's what I'm still doing, basically. So that's, that's an interesting part of the Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever talked to Sam Lachar in 2014 about kind of the vibe of? You know, placing my anxiety somewhere else or something else in the series. Yes, yeah. 
Um, a lot of your work is told in first person. Like when I arrived at the castle, and that's sort of not the usual for comics in my experience. Um, is that because a lot of it started as dreams? Is that because that uh, helps with the horror aspect? Is there like, is that just the way you like? I mean, it's a very horror thing to like have like such a like, Um But, um, for me, it's just because this sounds lazy, but narration is easy for me to write, <laughs> and so it's easy for me to just like start writing that from that right from that voice of that character because all my characters are basically me, <laughs> most of them anyway. Um, and um, yeah, I do like the cadence and stuff of narration um, because uh, it's like comes from storytelling. My dad showed me all the form, but also used to tell me a lot of like ghost stories and the urban legends and stuff like this, so that cadence of talking, you know, kind of through the internet and urban experience, I think it's just really embedded in me. Um, now I'm trying to get away from that bit, but I think it's tried getting me from the internet for a little bit, and then I went back. It's good. Uh, it's sort of a Um, and that was really fun. I didn't, it was sort of a weird because Amy wrote all the actual like event 
things in the game. So the game is kind of like funny, like <laughs> a weird tone. And then I did all the arts, like when you choose to like, you have characters select at the beginning, and then when you choose to like, look at the wizard's tower for a week, I did the art of the character working at the wizard's tower. So, um, because you drew it in such, or you did it in such a small amount of time, I really wish if I could go back, I could do the art better and more art for it, I think is what I could do. Um, but yeah, it's still available on Steam or whatever like that. It takes about 10 minutes to play. And it's very replayable. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do another game. It's, it's, yeah, it's very popular. You're going to do my head for it. Good thing. Yeah, I'm going to ask you the question. My question was really is that when you get in the tree, um, there's kind of like a current call that goes along with the story. Um, there's, in a lot of uh, your comments, I've noticed that there's like a lyric or an internal line of rhythm. Um, so I'm sure this all kind of comes first. The, uh, the text or the comics, and how do you get the picture for so long? Do they both kind of keep the Um, I usually say the actual writing stuff, like the actual like, literal, like being worked up till the end. I'll put it in a general, like, there should be a general thing here you know, with some of those things. Like, so there'll be a poem here of this, but especially with, like, rhyming stuff, because I decided to rhyme that entire book. Um, is it actually? Um, okay, it's short box. Short box is short Okay, great. Uh, so the, uh, that's uh, in the title three by short box um, that I did a couple years ago. Um, yeah, that whole comic is in rhyme for good or ill. That was another one that in a hurry, so. Yeah, I leave that till the very end, but I straighten the cadence of what I want. And then again, it's just really like very little. Even the whole box of the next one, um, that I just, I just fell in love with like, the cadence and the sound of that sentence. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and I think I was specifically thinking about that poem in particular um, when, I, when I wrote the other one. But yeah, it's like, Specifics of it. I'm like everything will end in like an E sound because it's the easiest way. But uh, I, I have to start to describe. I guess that's why I love it. But like I have the things in mind. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a question about one last one. I know there's not a lot of time left, so I can't just show this again. I was reading something about nightmares and about the reason why we have them maybe being in like a sort of mental rehearsal for we want to be in that area. And then I was also thinking about the way that a lot of comedians and they use comedy to make it to more of things. And I'm thinking about the way that there's so much real life horror now and the way you talk about there being like a sense of like fairy tale and kind of whimsy to your ideas. And I'm wondering what you think about the idea of horror as being like a kind of comfort when we kind of feel our sense. Oh, total catharsis. It's like, if you read uh, When I Arrived at the Castle, that book was basically when I wrote it, it was the my life. <laughs> and it was, and I was not writing it to uh, publish it or whatever. I literally thought I would have it made. If I had finished whatever this was, I could open it on my computer and look at it. Um, like, it was just for me to, like, do something um, to deal with these things. After looking back on it, I can recognize what was going on with me at the time. It's just really weird and not thinking about it. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I do like, like, there's a lot of horrible things all the time. It's, it is nice to, uh, to have like a horror that I can control. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and, and often, in a lot of my horror, the things that sort of scare me the most, that I feel most threatened by, um, or the most resentment towards, I put them as like, like, just a quick, but like, the main, all my main characters, <laughs> sounds horrible, but it's all like straight people. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, I can torture them for days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, in the context of my thing. But like, so like, that's, you know, I, I feel, I feel okay doing that. <laughs> in fiction, because I am working out these like, these resentments and things of my own. Um, but uh, it is my way of processing and like, yeah, making a man of Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you so much, Cam. Welcome.